Hello, plant community. Thanks for tuning in this channel. My name is Pam, and before you know it, you guys, we have probably a few more weeks before we enter the growing season, springtime. So, yay for our plants surviving to reach the next growing season. Now, I'm quite sure there's a lot of steps that you guys take to prepare your plants for springtime success. So today, you guys, I'm going to share with you five steps that I personally take to ensure that my plants are growing healthy and that they're thriving in this upcoming growing season. So stay tuned. Okay, guys, so before we actually get into it, if you have not subscribed to this channel, please do so, and I appreciate your support. So the first thing, one of the main things that I love to do, you guys, is for the spring season is, of course, spring cleaning, right? And there's two things that I like to clean, windows and leaves, in particularly when I'm in this sunroom, because currently I have two, four, six, seven windows, including eight, if you include the door. Um, and of course, over the winter season and fall time, it's just picked up dust and grime. So I do have a habit of cleaning all of my windows, particularly in here. I can't really say that I do that for indoors, but for here, because I know this is the sweet spot, I definitely clean all the windows in here. Now, along with cleaning the windows, I also clean my beautiful plant babies. Of course, over time, you know, you guys, plants can gather up dust and grime. And so this beautiful Calathea orbifolia that I have right here, um, which is turning into a beast of a plant. I'm not mad at it though. Um, this is one of my favorite plants, of course. Um, Y'all have seen me showcase her a lot of times on this channel, but I'm just showing for example purposes here. I usually use a microfiber cloth. If you don't have that, then that's fine. Use whatever rag you have, um, particularly maybe uh, paper towels or something along those lines. And I make sure that I am wiping or pretty much cleaning the top part as well as underneath. Doing so, you guys, just remove all that built up of dust and it's clean for them to be able to properly photosynthesize. That's why for me, it's equally important to clean not only the leaves, but the windows as well. Now, that's great for my larger leaf plants. Now for my smaller ones, like my beautiful small dainty Hoyas, um, I wanna say mainly my Hoyas because I'm able to wipe down these and my ficuses, my Hoyas, my small leaf ones, you guys, I typically spray them down with water. It would just take too long and be unrealistic to try to wipe down each and every little tiny dainty leaf. But I do like to spray them down. Since I'm kind of like here in, for example, in my sunroom and my kitchen is right there, it's really convenient for me to pick up my smaller plants and just put them in my sink and spray them down. Now, Fortunately for me, I have a, a sprayer for my nozzle um, in my kitchen, but if you don't have that, that still should not stop you because I'm gonna show you this, which is a very handy tool. If y'all haven't have, if you don't have one, I recommend getting one of these. This is my go-to. I got this from Lowe's. It probably was roughly um, about like $8. This is a half a gallon. Um, I think it's very convenient, especially if um, you're up, older and it's hard for you to carry things around. For me, it's a little bit more convenient just grabbing my little plant babies with the small leaves. I take them, I put them in the sink and I can use my sprayer. But if I didn't have that, this right here does very well. I use this a lot for my indoor plants that um, I need more space and I have to put it in my tub because I don't have a detachable shower. And I don't really want to have the shower just like raining on my plants. I want to kind of control the workflow, the water flow, if that makes any sense. So I usually put them in my tub and I use this to spray and clean my leaves and, it, and it tends to work fine. And it knocks off if there's any pest. So that goes into preparation step number two. I check for pests. This is a, before springtime, um, it's a perfect opportunity for us to inspect. Well, really any time that we're actually cleaning our leaves is an ample opportunity for us to actually inspect our leaves. Now, one of the things we wanna take note of 
is just for example purposes, you guys here, um, a lot of the pest tends to want to hide where the stem or petiole meets the actual leaf. It'll be around here in the crown area, and sometimes it will be in the back. But there's also, okay guys, so another area that we want to check for pests, I think is this called the sheath? I'm not sure, but these grow traditionally on our philodendrons, and it's just been my experience that these little buggers, bugs, they love nestling in the crevice of this. So I would traditionally just pull that off, pull it clean off. That way you can check to make sure that there are no pests hitting inside. Tip number three, you guys, is prune, or what I call P and P, prune and propagate. So it took me a long time, you guys, honestly, throughout my plant journey to finally feel comfortable enough and understand the logic behind actually cutting back my plants. I didn't want to cut them because I'm like, oh, they're growing so beautifully, yada, yada, yada. I'm thinking I want to, I need to save each and every leaf. And that's just not a good habit to have. It's best to cut back some of the leaves. It pushes or forces our plants to go in activation mode or uh, survival mode. And where you cut once, it grows pretty much twice. And so I do prune back. And I believe if y'all have watched me, y'all have watched me actually cut this big baby back and how she just steadily keep growing from me doing that so sometimes i'll cut back the plant the leaves that look not too aesthetic so for example you guys right here i just want to share with you this leaf right here um no this leaf right here as you can see is a pretty good leaf it's only crispy a little bit at the edges so for me i'm okay with that um but if you're not okay with something like that, then just cut the whole leaf off. It just seemed like when the majority, 80-20 rule, when 80% of the leaf still look good, but only 20% looks bad, then I kind of like just deal with it and, and until it finally goes too far back. Another tip, you guys, too, as far as chopping off those burning edges, when you cut, you want to cut not the crispiness completely off because what I've found out is when you try to cut it, all the way out over time it just winds up getting rebrown so you're going to be forever cutting and before you know it your leaf is going to constantly recede back 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 until you wind up having to cut the whole leaf off so i find that it works best for me if i kind of like just cut as close to it but leave some of that brown because it kind of like stops it a little bit so um yeah so that's just basically a quick tip now, propagation as we're also cutting these plants back, you guys, we want to take the opportunity to propagate. If you're one of those ones that say, oh, no, I don't want to prune back my beautiful plant. Or if you want to take an opportunity to have like a, a backup plant for a struggling plant, this is an opportunity, you guys, to actually propagate. Especially with plants that root very quickly, you can do so and have roots growing in no time in a matter of, I say at least two weeks depending on the plant you guys and it'll be ready for springtime. So over here you guys I have, I have this rattlesnake calathea. Very beautiful plant but you see right here there's a couple of crispy edges. For me I'm just going to go ahead and cut and like I said where I cut once it tends to grow twice now I'm thinking okay oh my god Pam why you do that's a perfectly good leaf it probably is from but for me aesthetically at this point I'm at the point where I'm looking for beautiful plants and I want it to grow healthy and full and lush so you know you have to sacrifice some of them if not you know so I'm only going to cut the leaves that I feel are like a little bit like crispy or like this like this point this leaf could have stayed on there right um it could have technically but I'm actually helping the plant out too so instead of me just cutting off the tips of it I just you know cut the leaves off and it tends to help it helps believe it or not um I'm not saying cut them down to the 
So they, you know, sometimes don't get too, too clip clip happy. And by the way, you guys, these was already pre-sanitized. So if you are going to cut and prune, remember to sanitize your shears. So, and I usually use um, a Clorox wipe because it's more convenient. I have them lying around in my house and yada, yada, yada. So, um, I'm looking, I think, I think I'm going to leave this leaf. It's okay. Um, got another one that I want to cut. So anything, it's all about your aesthetics. If you're okay with leaves looking like that, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with it because really the leaf, there's nothing wrong with the leaf. But I want to make it more bushier and more robust. But as you can see, let me see. Is this one? Let me just actually cut that off too. Didn't like the way that looked. Okay. I only cut probably a total of five, six leaves, but it's so full and compact, you really can't tell. But doesn't it look better? I think it looks better. So don't be afraid to cut your plants back. Another instance, an opportunity to cut. My beautiful Alocasia capria. Newly acquired plant in my collection. You guys just saw me share it with you quite recently are being added um, normally I try to allow the flowers to grow but really is this a showy flower not really um, so why would I keep this unless I plan on doing pollination which I don't I might as well just go ahead and cut this off so it takes the plant gives so much energy to these flowers you see that it's just best to cut it off because you want the energy to be focused on. Let me just make sure. Okay. Cutting this back to the sheath a little bit. You want the energy to be given to growing the plant, not the flower. So if you don't plan on pollinating, cut this baby off and hopefully it'll encourage her to push out another leaf as opposed to another flower. But this plant is gorgeous, and I hope that I will be able to get it into a bushier, fuller specimen. Um, but we'll see as we go along this plant journey, we're growing this baby. S step number four would be actually fertilizing. Fertilizing right now is a perfect opportunity to fertilize your plants if you have not been doing so. Now, you guys, I've been saying for my plants that has been growing, I do fertilize them as long as I see new growth throughout the year. But for my Hoyas in particularly, I take this opportunity pre-springtime to actually fertilize. And what do I fertilize with? I fertilize with miracle Grow Orchid Plant Mist Food. Now, I know a lot of you guys, or there's some of you guys out there that's not a big fan of using miracle Grow, and that's quite fine. I'm just sharing with you guys what I do. It's just a spray. I pretty much take the opportunity, especially all the Hoyas that's in here, and I sprayed them all down with this. And I don't know, I've been using this for, this would be my, hmm, almost my third year using this, and I don't know. I've it just seemed like I've been seeing more blooms with me using it. I don't know if it's just the mat, if the timing was perfect, you know, like I had the perfectly beautifully uh, mature Hoya that just happened to bloom, would it have bloomed without me using this? I really can't say, but what I can say is that I've just seen increase in my blooms with using this spray. So it's up to you if you guys want to try it um, or test it out maybe on one of your Hoyas that you've never seen a bloom from and see if it does do anything. I just know that I do have a, uh, about four or five Hoyas blooming co consistently. And I don't know if it's because of this, but hey, I, I still use it nonetheless. So Outside of that, for my other plants, I'm using my Captain Jack's uh, Balance, Equal Balance Fertilizer, usually my 20-20-20. Um, sometimes I do use, uh, what is that, Worm Castings, um, and I want to say that's pretty much it. 
So I've been sticking with my Captain Jacks. I have a big tub of it, you guys. So I was going to just actually use that out because I've been looking into wanting to try to do different things. I love experimenting and seeing what works best um, for my plants. So I might try to switch it up when I run out of my Captain Jacks. Um, I traditionally say, you know, if it's not broke, don't fix it. But I would love to take the opportunity to also experiment with different types of fertilizers as well. Now, step number five, you guys, this would be a perfect time for us to do a repotting of our plants or possibly replenish some of the soil. So sometimes, you know, the soil, okay, well, let's just take it back. Um, let's say it's a plant that you not really looking into getting it to be any bigger than what it is. So it could be one of your very well established plants, but the soil has kind of like depleted, but you kind of want that plant to stay the same size. Then that would be a good opportunity to just refresh the soil in the existing pot and not up pot it. Um, Cause up potting it is what we want to do when we are encouraging our plants to grow more vigorously. But if you have a full vigorous already growing plant, let's say it's reached almost the top of your ceilings and taking up, taking over your household space and you say, you know what, this plant is gorgeous, but I want it to stay the way that it is. Then we can do that and keep the same pot, but just refreshing the soil just so that your plant will have proper nutrients. The other thing you want to go around and you want to check to see which plants may seem to be root bound. This is a good time to take a look at the soil, see what's actually going on with the soil. If the roots are perfect if the roots are if they need to be pruned back because we can also prune back the roots but it's a good time for us to actually get down and dirty with our plants dig into that soil and take a look and see what's going on and then also up hot your plant babies if needed so i think those are the five main things i can honestly say that i do um, to prepare my plants um, another, I'm going to give y'all guys an extra tip of something else that I do do. And I guess this would be a tip number six, even though I said I had five, but I guess this will be a bonus feature for those of you who stayed towards the end. Another thing that I do notice or that I try to do is rearrange my plants a little bit. Sometimes my plants that require more light, I rely a lot on my Sansi lights that's growing that's here as well as inside my home. So now that we're entering the spring season and the sun is beaming as more vigorously as ever, this is our opportunity where we want to take some of our sun loving plants and push them closer to windows. And if you have that opportunity to also take them outside. So that's another thing that I do plan on doing once the weather breaks and it maintains an evening temperature of no less than 50 degrees. I will be putting some of my plants outside and I will bring you guys along for that journey as well, or at least the final preview of what that looks like. So yeah, that pretty much ends this video, you guys. Comment and share with this beautiful plant community what steps you take to ensure that your plants are growing lovely, lushly, and happily. <laughs> um, so keep in mind, if you love foliage as much as I do, and you love listening to planty things, subscribe if you haven't. Push those thumbs up. It helps my channel out a lot. I appreciate any and all support you guys can give me. Enjoy your day wherever you are in the world. And until next time, guys, much love. Bye.